Hey everyone, back just in time. Uh, oh, there's a. And hopefully this audio is better. Let me try speaking again, really loudly. Okay, it's fine. What about me? Hello, test, test, one, two, one, two. We'll see what Chad has to say. Oh, yeah. Okay, so new setup should be working better. Hopefully, there's no echo. Hopefully, fingers are crossed. Yeah, it's a best of five PVP. <laughs> and the other semifinals. Oh, there's a bit of an echo. On the bottom left is the red Protoss. It is showtime. An echo? What? Yeah, there's an echo. Like, okay, I can hear myself. Me, I can hear myself. Oh, is that coming through my side? It shouldn't be. I don't know. I'll try and fiddle with it, I guess. After the other intro. Uh, yeah, sorry. In the bottom right... Uh, the artist formerly known as Neeb, Neeblet. Uh, now, someone in chat and folks were asking, didn't sh didn't Neeb win last time these two fought each other? And the answer to that is no, actually. It was the Corsair Season 4 Finals, and Showtime ended up beating Neeb. In fact, Showtime's PvP is really cool right now, and blah, blah, blah. But he is actually the like three-month-in-a-row record holder for our, uh, our Corsair Cup Series. How are, how are things going over there? Okay, well, uh, at any rate, the thing we've seen about this PvP that's really cool, and we commented on this when we did cast them last time as well, was they're actually kind of next level when it comes to this matchup. And I don't just mean like, oh, okay, these are two good players at the top of the ladder, and let me just say common, like, cast or things. The fact that they know each other and they both know how to play the meta, like there, there was almost, I think, zero Zealot Archon play. We actually had air battles. Like PVP between these two, I think it even happened at DreamHack Austin too. Like PVP between these two is very different than PVP between most other players. Mm. Like take, for example, Hurricane, who's been kicking a lot of ass on the Korean server and put him against any of the, the Korean Protoss. And I don't think you see any games that look like what we see with Neeb and Showtime. Well, I might have fixed the echo problem, but the crackling is back on your side. Crackling. Yeah. I don't think it's your mic. I think it's Discord. Oh, God damn it! I was really hoping this would be a better solution. Yeah. Well, as in everyone. Uh, I don't want to... I don't know if any of these other... There's an echo cancellation button, but I don't know about the other stuff. I don't see anything else that says, like, crackling suppression. <laughs> No, no, I don't know what would be causing the crackling either. Yeah, it comes and goes. Well, it's better than what was happening on Skype, so I guess we'll just live with it. Uh, Neeb is, uh, has placed on a pro proxy pylon. It's going to be aggressive. Showtime's adepts are going to be met <coughs> by the two stalkers. Pushed back, and then there's going to be uh, four stalkers at the front. Mothership Core is instantly responded to. Uh oh. Oh, oh my god, that was close. Oh, I forgot. Wasn't this the series where you got like 10 probe kills with the Mothership Core? Yeah, but then Showtime still won. Yeah, that was on the same map. Yeah. That's funny. Crazy stuff. Crazy. So, Stalker is only two of them, of course. The other two were busy defending a Dense Adepts. We're uh, applying a little bit of pressure, but really not able to use this pylon yet. Throws down a Nexus. Uh, two more just being produced because Gwarp Kid isn't finished. I mean, Shotem still hasn't seen the probe or the pylon, so he could use it. But I'm not. I don't know if this is what Neeb was hoping for. Hmm. Yeah, while that was happening, um, Twitch also like kind of broke for me, I guess. So it looks like it's offline to me, and I can't hit the add button. So I'll have to fix that again. Uh, I can take care of that if you need. Just remind me later. I guess, yeah. I think a refresh would just fix it. I don't want to alt tab. Uh, a couple sentries being warped in. There is finally the warp in of stalkers, as well as the two that were produced just regular old fashion uh, coming in from back at home. Force fields go down, but there's no force in overcharge quite yet. Stalkers being target fired as well. Both go down. This is kind of scary. An immortal's about to pop out, and these are blinkless stalkers. Blinkless almost sounds like insulting the way we say it. Well, it is. They're inferior. Mm. 
Oh, an immortal does Is this pop. Is crackling, up. by the way? No. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Adept's getting to the main base. This Neeb didn't really apply as much pressure again as he would wa have wanted to. So distracts the army, attacks to the front, takes care of the pylon. But the pylon wasn't the worst thing. It was definitely the immortal. And so there's been no more warp in since those adepts. Neeb's not really going to be able to think it too much. He does get a sentry, and seven, eight probes in total went down. Nine oh, wow. go down with a combination. This leaves Neeb without any of Immortals of his own, and with a very small army, however. It's definitely a weak point for him. Blink is on the way, Robo's on the way, but it's very far off. Puts on a pylon because he absolutely needs it. Well, the probe count evened up with all those kills, so... Not, hmm. uh, not game-breaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Neeb ahead four. Got a stalker sniped, but it looks like Showtime, even though he has this immortal lead, is not going to try and commit. Probably figuring, but by now, Neeb has thrown down enough pylons that overcharge would be enough, so he just has to go home. That kind of sucks, because he is the one down in probes now. And down in that blink tech. The only thing he has is the Immortal Count, which he is now being stalled out on as he gets a War Prism. And uh, he might not be able to do very much with. So I've just been looking at my settings for a lot of this game and I just don't see anything to do to change. Well, it stopped crackling, so I don't know. So I'll fiddle with it. Yeah, a lot it's of not gateways. broken, don't fix it, right? That's the logic? Yeah, I mean, it might break eventually, just like Skype does. <laughs> Right now it's fine. I just feel like I it, I don't know what it is between you and me. Maybe it's just sick of us. Because, like, I never have this problem with Wardy. I never have this problem with Maynard. You oh, never have this problem is. with Maynard, right? Like, Well, that's not entirely true. Like, I occasionally Maynard will also, like, dip out on Skype. But not nearly as often or as badly as you do. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's back. So, it, it always seems to be when the there's a... Either you're talking fast slash, like, the most. Or... There's a, a lot going on in the in the battles on StarCraft. So it's a very you know, annoying com uh, combo. Oh, okay. That is a hefty loss. The only thing that Showtime uh, had going for him was the Immortal Count, and he just lost two. Lost his War Prism, can't counter, can't keep Neve back. Did manage to kill four probes and take a... Five probes and take a four probe lead. But now his army is the uh, apparently inferior one. The army supplies aren't bad, but... There's an immortal here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Almost same thing happening. They waste another shot on the warp prism, but it doesn't go down, so the immortal just absolutely shreks all of the stalkers, and Neeb is looking to win with this push. There are force fields available, so I think at most he just gets the third cancel. And that's a lot of stalkers. Let's we'll Phoenix even to see what he can do. <laughs> he tries to save Lucy Phoenix. Sure or not. Uh, Showtime is on his way to Disruptor. And that could definitely help, but, you know, if the overwhelming stalker count is there, then sometimes even a Disruptor doesn't do enough. In fact, they just usually blink on top of it if they see an opportunity. It's a lot yeah. of minerals and gas invested into one Disruptor. Overcharges, force fields can go a long way, though. he has got so many stalkers, though. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's really looking to overpower Showtime. At some points, even almost doubling the army supply. Uh, he's gonna just blink micros. This isn't the blink in, but I think he's... Yep, there you go. He was looking for it. Gets the Disruptor. Gets the Immortal. I think this is that... That's the game moment there. There's a couple of stalkers that moved across the map to hopefully distract, but they're way too late in that. I think Neve takes game number one. Yeah, it's getting just a little bit too out of hand, doubling that army supply, even if he gets an amazing Disruptor hit, which wasn't bad, but not good enough. There's still just so much behind it. GG. So what's the verdict? Do we stick on this or we go back to Skype? Because it sounds like either way, I just have to be like background noise. I think this. Right. The crackling isn't that bad, and you do come through clear on Discord. Sucks, though. Okay, that's uh, game one of best of five. This is the semi-final in the winner's bracket, so even if someone loses here at the end of the world, they would go on to the loser's bracket.
Uh, the other match going on right now is Sorta versus Hero Marine. I think Wardy's. I think Wardy's covering that one, right? That's what I would assume. Yeah. And TLO Bly, I figure, is also happening, but I'm not sure. Oh, my cat's left again. Mm. Oh, well, that was the wrong game anyways, so thanks, StarCraft. Good jiggery. I've tried to see an automatic volume on Skype. Is that... It's, it's, if anything, it'd be on Zombies receiving end. Because the thing is, when I'm, I, I'm trying to think how to describe this for you guys. When Zombies or myself are casting on our end, our mics never get interrupted. So it's not the microphone that's the problem. It's something on the receiving end of the programs we're using. So, for example, here it's Discord. Otherwise, it's Skype. Hmm. Well, sound clear enough now. Yeah, I'm just hope it. I guess just, just gently shush me when it breaks. Spawning here in the top left he is going to be the German Red Perotas Showtime. <laughs> we weren't in game. There we go. Oh, awkward. In the bottom right is the low Perotas. It is Neeb. Oh. So, uh, some good aggression. You know, just overwhelms. Yeah, and I gotta say, like, little, like, it wasn't a big game where, like, you had this one big disruptor hit that changed everything, but it was notable, like, Neebs, like, there was no sloppiness coming out of him with his play style, he wasn't, like, being complacent with his blink stalkers, and I really enjoyed that, because little victories led to that big supply lead. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was the, uh, you know, a couple of stalkers here, and the denial of the warp prism was a pretty big one as well. I mean, two more immortals and a warp prism to micro or keep Neeb's army back. Uh, big, di like, that's a very different game. Once Showtime lost that warp prism, Neeb just, like, absolutely knew he was going to be able to control the pace of the game and probably even win, which is exactly what he did. But uh, I think Neeb was able to take the first game in their series on that Corsair Cup finals you were talking about, and yet he still lost, eventually 3-1. And mostly in those those long macro games. Yeah. Well, maybe revenge is in order. So you know what? You can win the small stuff, the Corsair Cup season finals. I'll take the big stuff, like the Pentas party. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that would be a good trade for Neeb. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also one game in the series, and I don't want to overanalyze one game because there's still a lot to be said for Showtime. Mm-hmm. Oh, stalkers versus Adepts. Me with the Adepts. Uh, just scouting. Uh, there could be one base Stargates, or there could be one gate expands. It's kind of the differences. Otherwise, it is almost always going to be the two gateway openers for PvP into an expand. Uh, Showtime also last game. I mean, there's like a lot of mistakes. The Stalkers, the Warpers, and the Immortals. But then also on top of that, the fact that he let that pylon just stay there for a long time. So that's what started the first contain that he had to deal with. Uh, this game is not going to be the same case, and maybe even looks around a little bit for that specific pylon once again, but this is really just to try and find the Adepts, which it will. Oh, oh wait, 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 go up the ramp. Soik. I think Militia Core sees it. Uh, Militia Core is seen itself, though, which is kind of funny, so you're going to be on top of any probe shenanigans of that Militia Core. It would take a long time to get over there, though. She wasn't going the right way. Adepts, you really want to get into the main base, at least see what's following up. And it is going to be, uh, barely see the Nexus? Yeah, well, they shaded in, so. I changed some bit rates, so, by the way. Does this sound any different? Mm. Or is it still a little bit crackly? Well, it's not crackling, but again, like, it's, it's in and out, so time will tell. Well, my thoughts are, like, maybe I just start swapping out XLR cables or something. I mean, I've got spare ones that have never been used before. <laughs> maybe that's the solution? I, don't, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, I can't imagine it's something to do with the cables. Because it's specific to the Discord. Mm. And maybe it's something on my end, but all the... I don't know what the, the tools would be to fix it. There's, there's so many tools in Discord, which I guess is supposed to be a good thing, but... 
I haven't learned what they all are. Well, a little bit of soccer pressure, so the reverse of last game. But Neeb has enough units to deal with it, whereas Showtime had a little bit of trouble. Tiniest bit of trouble in the early game. Blink already on the way for Showtime. Robo about finished as well, whereas Neeb is only just finishing Twilight Council. Uh, but hasn't really started producing from his Robo, so even though he had it, it's not, it's not working. Sentry was killed. Nice snipe. Lucent Phoenix going to see exactly what's following this up, too. Uh, pretty standard, I would say. Robo and Twilight Council. Well, Blink, the weapon of choice out of both, means I guess we will see Disruptors come out again. It's just become so common nowadays, and I, I always love looking back on it. I know it's boring. You've heard me say this 20 times before, but I still find it really neat that, like, you had an entire expansion where if you were going blink in a PvP, you were a noob. You didn't know what you are doing. It's not the way you wanted to play. Well, if you stayed on blink. <laughs> like, you could... Yeah, well, you know what I mean. But the point is, like, now it's become such a standard and, and just essential part of the matchup. Mm-hmm. It certainly has. A uh, nice little fake Oracle here from Showtime. I'm not sure if Lucid Phoenix saw what was going on. It looks like it did. Yeah, okay. Um, Lucid Phoenix saw it, so I count on the Robo. And the gateway's being produced, so he was not faked out at all by this Oracle. This War Prism, though, is very real. It does have two Adepts. And while it won't get the craziest amount of kills, because Showtime is just back at home anyways, uh, one or two at a time can definitely add up. Hmm... He knows the Twilight Council was a lot faster than his, so Blink was kind of up in the air, and it did just finish. So the Orphan's got to be very careful with what it does. Showtime fast with the Robotics Bay, equal on the upgrades. Neeb just a little bit behind in a lot of regards. I guess a little bit ahead on the Immortals. Takes his third base, or prepares to take his third base a little bit faster too, so it's going to be economy versus tech. Looks like Phoenix does see that. This one sees the Robotics Bay in the back. And now they are fully aware of both of their situations. Ooh. Well, the thing is, and this is the sad part of PvP, this is going to be a bit slow. That being said, we're going to have some pretty epic fights once they finally do get into, I guess, into it. I'm curious, though, because we were seeing some consistency, or rather, I guess, I'd rather say inconsistency on who is willing to go air, but I think the recognized thing is if you can, you want to go to air, and we did get to see a carrier versus carrier game out of these, too. Mm -hmm. They have gone pretty late into the late game. Um, and they... Actually, wasn't it uh, Showtime forgot, like, Graviton Catapult or something like that? Yeah, and that was still that, that like, he, it's funny, because I think you bring up the same game twice. That was the same game. He also lost, like, 10 probes to Neeb for the Militia Core. Yeah. But he ended up winning, so that's kind of funny. Well, Warpism still isn't doing very much, and Hoox and Phoenix are just continuing to see, like, if anyone does try. Because, um, I mean, third base is third base, Blink versus Blink, <coughs> Robo versus Robo, they both know that much. So continuing to scout might seem like it's kind of useless, but it's also going to see where the army is. But also, in case anyone does try and just kind of, like, skip a step, which they didn't really skip steps in the last series they played, like, a week ago, but they did sometimes accelerate really quickly to, like, the, the late game. And there was, I think, at least one game where... Or maybe that was a PDZ. I don't remember. But the point is, like, it, it can happen where you just kind of... You stop scouting, you get content... You just wait for them to push into you while you do your thing, and then they've they've out-teched you. Even though your army's okay, they still have better tech and a better army. So just consistent, consistent scouting. Even consistent denial on scouting. It seems kind of useless, but for them it's very important. Well, what's the unit count looking like right now? How close is this so far? It's 13 to 13. I mean, aside from that war prism, it's pretty much exactly even. So what's cool about this that I, I do like is we do see one big variation out of Neeb with that Stargate. I guess we'll talk more about that in a moment. But um, the the fact is they're going to have the same tools and the same means to fight each other. And this is going to come down to a question of skill and positioning and experience and who can actually get those hits. But mm -hmm. this is where I really like Neeb's position. And whether he builds one, two, or five Phoenix, the fact is when they swoop in, 
If they Graviton Beam and then die even instantly, but they cancel the shot of the Disruptor, that is the biggest way to shut down Showtime's damage. Well, the one circuit looks like it might just be for that one Oracle that could be so helpful. Hell, with Revelation's the scouting. good, yeah. Yeah, because now as they do grow and disrupt their counts, it's going to like, Lucian and Phoenix are going to be more of a vote to pull off. So Revelation is, is going to be very, very key. Knowing where your opponent is and where the disruptors are at all times. Um, I unchecked a setting that might have fixed it. So, you're just hoping. Cross the fingers. Double yeah, disruptors. So last, like, what's Rifkin saying? I mean, it wasn't that bad at all. I think they're just kind of trolling. Or he's saying you're crazy. <laughs> No, yeah, that could be that. I am yeah. crazy. Uh, but right, so the Stargate's already on the way, or already finished for Neve, and he's already on an Oracle. Showtime a little bit later to it. He's also going to be a little bit later to Charge. And Charge is kind of like, I feel like it's still called a bit of an accessory tool when it's Blink Talker versus Blink Disruptor. But we've seen a lot of games where Charge was the difference of like good harassment versus okay harassment, and getting on top of Disruptors versus, well, you know, letting them attack your, your main army. Uh, when these guys faced off Blink Stalker versus Blink Stalker, Showtime was taking the better trades, which was so bizarre because usually Neve is well known for his Blink Stalker disruptor control. And it was on this map that I remember highlighting that feature, saying, like, yeah. whoa, how is Neve losing so much stuff? I mean, he's the one being aggressive, and so far, no, nothing really to say about either one's position other than Neve is getting faster to a fourth base again. Well, army looming outside, I mean, this will pay off for the aggressor quite a bit if you can get those couple of shots. I still think, even though it was like the more amateur side of it, I still always think back to the M Canny games though. Just that difference that like even one good shot can make, you know? Yeah. Well, you look at how many disruptor Showtime has and how much they've clumped up together. It's nine disruptors to seven, but I think Neve has his like, you know, a bit more spread out in the army. And that is like that one clump that could destroy Showtime's chances in the game. He's finally on his way to a charge as well. He's just a little bit behind on everything, except the disruptor count. Um, and they're continuing to just <laughs> produce as many disruptors as possible. Uh, was there a base over here? Well, charge is over here tonight anyways, and Showtime does put one down over here. That's still in trouble. And again, this disruptor shot's very, very peculiar. Big army coming from behind, however. He might have had Revelation, but only on one half of the army. His is gonna be worth sandwiching. Okay, he sees it. He sends a revelation. He's gonna try and, and will not get sandwiched, basically. Unfortunately, he used the blink to get away, so he couldn't blink on top of these disruptors that were left alone. Units coming from the south as well over here, and those were charge lots. They're sort of being thrown everywhere, but not quite getting the heart of Neeb's army. Ah, super zoom. <laughs> There's actually so much stuff going on. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I think charge lots were continuing to chase over here, so I think a disruptor went down, as well as a couple of Stalkers, charge rods can be good. Showtime's half of the army is still over here. It looks so silly. They're constantly splitting up, sniping whatever they can. Other oracles down from Neeb. They both have fourth bases, but Neeb has a few more probes. Uh now it's Showtime's army that's getting a little bit trapped. Blink isn't on. Oh, it is on cooldown. Off cooldown. Okay, joins back up. That was a roller coaster of emotions, but they reached back to exactly where they were a minute ago. <laughs> Damn it. The sound has been fine since you've been talking for the last two minutes, like, and it wasn't that bad. So, I think chat's just a little crazy. I think whatever setting I turned off fixed it. Although now you're not talking, so I wonder if somehow you muted, or I muted you. Let's try to listen to stream to see if it was still all messed up or not. Oh. Sounds no. okay, I guess. No, it's it's I'm, been fine. Yeah, I'm about to start timing people out for this because the trolling's not appreciated. We're trying to put on a good show for everybody. Yeah. No, it sounds like it might be fixed. Knock on wood. Um, All right. Well, I'm just gonna leave it where it is and not fiddle for a bit. But mothership. Okay, cloaking's gonna be cool. The nice thing is you don't need vision to still detonate a disruptor shot, and <laughs> typically things are all stacked up underneath the mothership. So even if you don't have detection. Is still land those shots, but uh, Oracle's gonna be big, and I think Showtime needs one really badly. Yeah, well, they've both been sniping each other, so Showtime has one. Uh, he's killed two of Neebs. Neebs just made one, I think, yeah. Just made yeah, one. Yeah, made another one. Uh, they're both on their way to carriers, but still a lot of positioning going down. It's really hard to keep track of what all these guys doing and their humongous armies. Oh, Kidoki, then that was a good shot from Neeb over there. 
It's a good chunk of the supply, but there's not really too big of a follow-up. I mean, the thing is, like, we're kind of past that point where it's like Banley Wars. One good disruptor shot isn't going to upset the balance of the game. They're both going towards carriers. They're both getting air units. At some point, disruptors are going to have a, perhaps the least impact Ooh. on the fights. Nice snipe on that one disruptor saves most of Neebs. I love these charge um, lots, though. Yeah, like, you can see how much they complicate things. If they were just a little bit sooner, they would have just... Well, here we go. That's that's what can happen. They kill all the charge lots because they kind of group up together. But then the other thing that happens is they get on top I of mean, the disruptors. It took, and... it took, like, four or five shots, though, to finally land them on this charge yeah. lots. Like, it's not exactly easily done. It's it's but, not. Uh, grab... Go ahead. You know, I just realized Graviton on Catapult finishes up for Showtime, and Neeb is only... Okay, he just begins it. I was going to say, I hope he doesn't forget this. It could be huge. Yeah. Uh, as a note, when the Charge on top of the Disruptors, they just have no problem attacking themselves because they can't kill themselves or each other. But there's uh, multiple parts to this army that are finally all grouped up together for Neeb. They just had an agreement. We'll friendly fire everybody except ourselves. Basically, the kind of the most selfish dicks of the Protoss galaxy. <laughs> Disruptors unite. Uh, again, splitting things up. Right side, left side, strong side. Oh, it's a lot of disruptors. Uh, but the splits are really that bad for Showtime, and he didn't have enough army responding anyways. Although I'm now confused on who's on who. Huh. Neeb is going to be cleaned up. So I'm not going to try anymore. Okay, those are his disruptors, so they're getting cleaned up. And the right side was also pushed back. He saw the carriers, but I think they already knew that was going that, that direction anyways. And it's more of a question of how many carriers does he have in comparison to mine. And the answer is exactly the same. In fact, Neeb, the third Stargate, is about to get ahead on the carrier count. He's also been ahead on the income for some time with only one or two spikes from Showtime. Oh, no. I'm wondering how much of that bank is going to matter, though. Like, I guess... If you lose all your carriers, you're not reproducing seven at a time. Do you just decide to go for a bunch of warp ins and hope for the best through zealots? Hmm. Uh, charge lots get missed with that shot. I'm not sure what's going on there with Showtime, but coming for the backside with the stalkers, they won't be able to focus down the carriers. Some nice pickoffs with these units that are just left over from the early game. Uh, okay, disruptors do some friendly fire, but mostly clean up the zealots. Stalkers are going to take out that cannon, so they need to be dealt with over here on the right side. Cannons are holding for Neeb. Big stalker warp and disruptors are used on the cannons, which is not available as the stalkers blink forward. Uh, but they're not enough of them. Carrier comes forward. Watching, I, I feel like watching stalkers shoot these interceptors down is kind of like watching otters chase a butterfly through a field. It's just like it looks so silly. You today with the otters and the and the, the trash pandas, raccoons. That's the word. <laughs> I was thinking chipmunks for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> small furry animals, dude. Yeah, exactly. Well, the attack on the left side is charge lots, but there's nothing really here to defend it. Just a lot of probes that were hoping to go mine, and Showtime has found himself down. Okay, well, he was th down 30, but then now only down about 10. Uh, upgrades are... The assimilator's actually really nice. Uh, yeah. Upgrades are in favor of Neeb, by the way. He has plus two shields. Ah, yeah. Uh, not by much. I mean, Showtime's got its finishing up here soon-ish, but mm -hmm. I guess kind of forgetting that Plasma Shields are an upgrade when it comes down to this. Colossus? That can't be intentional, is it? I wouldn't I think like so. The C for Colossus is also the C you're trying to hit for carriers as you're pressing the buildings. Yeah, that might this, be the case. He doesn't have extended thermalists, but my, my, my one thought here is Colossus could be kind of interesting if this was made entirely for the Zealots. Because two or three Colossus could mow down the waves of Zealots coming at him. Well, I, yeah. I feel this was closer to a misclick than anything else, but it's just an interesting thing to consider. It'd have to be like four Colossus, because the Zealots are pretty pretty chunky. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Colossus would have to not die to the Disruptors. Zealots also, by the way, speaking of chunky, taking the hits from the Stalkers, like champs. Mm -hmm. Equal upgrades now, three, two, one. But Neeb is the one investing into further upgrades as his economy has just been better. <laughs> It's like, this is the sickest countdown to upgrades of all time. Uh, I mean... Two, one. <laughs> yeah, three, two, one. Oh, no, it's three, two, two. My bad. Showtime had a plus two air weapons. Oh, so not even. In fact, uh, Showtime yeah, well, Neeb's three, two, one, though. No, but Showtime's three, two, two. I know, but I'm just saying. Countdown still works for Neeb. Oh, 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 oh yeah. 
Okay, that, that was the most important thing. Well, Neeb will have an upgrade lead eventually for like a good minute here. He has been <laughs> he in control really of cool. the game for a while. Uh, shift out really quick. Look how close this has been for trades. Like almost the exact same amount of units on both sides. Like 54 zealots to 53 zealots. 42 soccers for 36. Mm -hmm. 12 disruptors for 16. Like this has been really back and forth. Yeah. The difference is Neeb has not lost any carriers where Showtime lost two pretty early on for trying to engage that fourth base. And uh, Showtime has lost two Nexus, also to add into that. Yeah, the Colossus is helping. I'm helping. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how intentional that was, but it's pretty cool to see. The Serpent Shot's going like crazy underneath this. Both players are cloaked. Uh, detection being a bit of an issue, I guess. They shoot each other's motherships. Mm, yeah, that's a uh, mothership of... Showtime goes down real quick with a focus think... fire. I think Showtime's on his way out for this. I don't know what he can do to make up for. He's lost so much, and it's just big, hard to reproduce units without a bank. Losing those Nexus top right, still getting gutted. Probes are dying. I think Neeb's about to walk away with the game. Yeah, I think so. Certainly getting revenge for that Corsair Cup tournament. Five more carries in the way. That's it. GG. GG. Well, it's a best of five though, not a best of three. So not tournament life or anything like that. In line. In fact, it's still the winners bracket. So. Even if Showtime loses 0-3, he still has the loser's bracket to fight back from. Yeah, that being exactly. said, I think uh, this looks like an ad break. Yeah, it could be the last game. So, quick two minutes. Welcome back. It is game number three. And uh, it's on Abyssal Reef in the bottom right. With the red Protoss, he is Showtime. And his opponent spawning opposite of him. It's going to be the guy currently dominating the series, Neeb. Yeah. 2-0. Looking pretty strong in both the games as well. One, just a mostly a gateway pressure game. Showtime was only able to get one disruptor, so I can't really call it a disruptor game. The second game went the uh, the full length of PvP up into the carriers, but most of it, Neeb looked the stronger of the two. He got a bit faster on the expansions, a bit more probes, a bit uh, faster to uh, like the Stargate and the Oracle, and uh, he didn't really take any devastating disruptor shots, even though Showtime was ahead in that department, so it didn't add up to enough for our Red Protoss player. I will say, though, it's, it's so crazy. If you were to take that best of five that we played for the Corsair finals and you take this best of five here I don't know what the difference is I really don't but Neeb is playing so much better yeah I mean he really did seem like he was off in that Corsair Cup finals especially because when it came to the highlight of, of Neeb when we think about Neeb is playing a soccer disruptor he just was taking the much worse hits very consistently too which wasn't supposed to happen so maybe it's an off day something like that I guess we all have them from time to time. But, no, um. I never have them. Just for your end here, because I know we got more trolling chat. Is it still crackling? Because I'm, I'm about to just go swap out cords. Mmm, a little bit in the beginning when you were talking to me, but now it's not. Yeah, I'm just gonna mute myself for a minute while I do this. Okay. Well, if it fixes it, then that would be great, but I think the chances seem pretty low. So it only occurs when we're on Discord. Uh, Nexus on the way for both parties. Adept shade in, adept, adept shade out. Adepts responding to Adepts as no one went for Stalkers. And both players are going for a Stargate follow-up, but Showtime goes for a Stargate much sooner. What did he skip to do that? Ah, oh, two Stalkers. Gotcha. Yeah, those are at home. Okay, well, that that's pretty big. You know, when they realize that it's Stargate versus Stargate, whoever gets the Phoenixes first will keep that lead for some time. Hmm. Uh, Depths run forward, looking for something to do, but I don't think I find much. People in chat saying that English no good. 
You English no good. Uh, looks tempting to go for those. There's so many probes stacked up there, but of course that's to save the adepts for later. Oracle is going to look for at least some of those probes that he saw, because there's only two stalkers available, so definitely worthwhile. Ah, uh, maybe overcommitting though. Yeah, especially with that Phoenix popping out. I didn't expect that, and that is bad news. Showtime didn't realize that it was a Stargate from his opponent, but Neeb uh, didn't realize that either had gone for a Phoenix first, and because of it has taken, uh, believe it or not, a pretty drastic lead. As now, if they wouldn't enforce okay. his Phoenix, he would absolutely win it. I have plugged and unplugged and replugged everything. How does this sound? It's fine, but we will see. <laughs> All right. Fingers crossed here, fam. Uh, Adept's looking to come in. They might just have to skip right past the natural. There's like no chance to take a fight here. Um, uh, Adept's, a uh, couple of them, nope. Decided not to go for it. The Mothership Core full on energy just wasn't worth. The Adept's just straight on back. Pylon is on the way for Showtime and he's looking to catch Neeb. Uh, not, he's obviously not playing to the Phoenix versus Phoenix game, but Neeb has realized that and has only stopped at three. So we got that easy pickup on the Oracle. It isn't adding to too much if the Blink Stalkers can overwhelm him, and it's looking dangerous. Three Phoenixes can't help up very much with that many Blink Stalkers. So he's going to need the Photon Overcharge defense. He would love to have an Immortal, but his Rebel only just finished. Proxy Gateway even being put down. Showtime is definitely going to be aggressive with Blink. And Neeb, well, Neeb can't do much about it with the Phoenixes, but he can certainly scout it. They might be able to pick up a key unit or two. Their base is also on the way, so I wonder if Showtime's really gonna try and do this, or this is just an option he's opening up for himself. I think he's got everything. Immortal is on the way, and that is something that Sneeb is gonna be glad he got. Instead of a warp prism or an observer. Uh, looks like he is going for a fourth base, and Depth's, you know, just patrolling the probe, making sure it doesn't die to a single adept over here or something like that. But in doing so, also manages to see a proxy pylon. That's pretty important. I mean, he has been scouting pretty thoroughly, and I think he saw the army just move out, so there also might have been some indication to just scout around anyways. But finding the exact location is always nice. An immortal, a couple of centuries of Photon Overcharge. As long as that immortal... Uh, okay, well, there you go. Barrier popped. As long as he isn't blinked upon and sniped, he will add a ton of damage. Thank you to... First lick for the five month resub. Sentry is the one that goes down. Another one has to pop a guardian shield. The barrier was popped earlier and that drastically affected how quick that immortal went down. And Showtime might just be able to win with this push. The photon overtures aren't available. The pilot went Ooh. down. No warpings either. And that's just game. Showtime. Showing up finally in time. Puts one point on the board. Neeb's not going to walk away with a 3 0. No, no, he's not. He got such a nice opener by killing that Oracle. Look at his splits, but the response of Blink Stalkers was quite good. He had more time, or maybe he had been even more defensive and invested into like a Void Ray, for instance. I think time. He needed time more than anything else. Sure. I mean, there's also a ton of micro mistakes because he wasn't, I think, mentally prepared for it. Losing that pylon immediately, losing that Immortal's barrier immediately, losing the Sentry immediately. All things maybe he could have avoided. Well, find out what game four is here in a moment. Proxima Station. Yep, everyone's in. I will say I have I've officially played on all the new maps now. And I obviously have the ones I like and dislike, but I um I really I, I've enjoyed Sequencer a lot more than I thought I would. It kinda makes me sad it's not in this tournament now, to be honest. <sighs> um I mean, we enjoyed Sequencer enough when it was in the map test tournament. Not too surprising. Hmm. Here you are in game number four. Well, here we are. Now you guys are here too. It's uh, not We're all here. Up it's quite a party. Yet. Well, it's not quite a party either. <laughs> well, it's a penthouse party. That it is. In the bottom left. Getting a point on the board finally, it is the Red Protoss Showtime. And his opponent spawning opposite, still winning the series and only one game away from victory, it's Neeb. Mm. 
Well, it is Proxima Station, and this map has been uh, quite figured out for PvP. You're always going to want to wall off, and usually, I would say, more often than not, you have someone go for a one base Stargate. Whether that is proxy or not is, is up to them, but it just seems to be what usually happens. You'd think that there would be a grand opportunity to stop them from scouting and stop them from harassing, so you could take a Nexus play it that way, but no, it usually always ends up being like, you stop them from scouting a Stargate and you try and, and fit it in. Uh, this is in fact what happened last time they played on Proxima. They both ended up going for Stargates and it ended up being one of the Phoenix versus Phoenix battles. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Believe it or not, a probe can kill a pylon if you are slow to building a unit. That's very true and very annoying. Also, I'm just now realizing the camera follow wasn't working and I'm like, yeah, why is she not talk like why is she just staring at the Nexus? <laughs> yeah. So I guess I have to freeform and do my own observing this game. Feels bad, man. Oh, is it but, not working so when you reset it? It's weird. No, like it's not following you at all. It's just staying still. Unless you are staying still. But yo, here's the real question. Whose pylon dies first? I guess Showtimes is a little bit lower by like two extra attacks. Uh yeah, you're right. What's so annoying about this? Like, they should both be able to save their pylons. But what's really annoying about this is if one does die, that's actually a pretty nasty supply block. It's also annoying for the future. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be too aggressive on the front lines. So, like, that one pylon is going to be the big difference maker. But it's like, oh my sometimes god, it could be. Oh my god, no way. Hold up, showtime. Oh, no, okay. I was going to say, much <gasps> way out. deep breaths. Not too deep though. They're cracking a little bit. Oh, damn it. I know, I know. Just Maybe cord, internet, man. god damn you. I mean, it might be. I have, we have no idea what it is. You know what? I'll be in Korea, so... <laughs> yeah, that'll fix it. I'm like 99% sure it's Canadian internet, dude. Well, if you're going to blame some internet, I guess blame the Canadian one. Stalker finds a mothership core, but the mothership cores find each other, so Neeb shouldn't be too far off defending against his his own little pressure. There was a Stargate built for Neeb. I don't know what this, pilot, this probe is doing. It's, it's, it's hovering. got blue balls from not being able to kill the pylon. Mm. So it's off what? in the corner, just trying to work it out. Is that that probe? I guess it is that probe. Voidery on the way for Neeb. That's surprising. His mothership core gets a full scout into the main base, where Showtime is taking his time at the front because there's a pylon there. And he'll look at that. Almost, he almost didn't get the recall off back over on the other side of the map. Yeah, but, uh, the close. offensive pylon overcharge. Ah! What is this, Terran? Oh no, that's going to depower a bunch of stuff. He powers warp gate, which is huge, and you gotta consider Neeb. Like, right now, that void rate is all he really can make. Mm, yeah, it's about to pop out, and this is a very powerful tool. As no one is truly committing to any follow up, Showtime has already gone for a nexus in his own Stargate. But Neeb takes damage, he loses out on warp gate timing. His own nexus is only just done, so it's a little behind Showtime's. Uh, he does get the mothership, not too bad there, 100 gas. And the Voidray is even looking for that Stalker that barely escaped with very little health. Uh, Warpgate is not going to have too much of a timing because of all that, too. So while it looked uh, <laughs> frightening, it's not that bad. Showtime is going to be the one to really force the Stargate issue. I mean, these guys could have gone away from their Stargates, Robo, Twilight Council, either way. But uh, Showtime double downs. Neeb's going to have to scout this. Oracle coming across the map. Uh, speeding to do some damage. The Void Ray still sitting outside the front. Does kill a pylon. And the other pylon's so low from earlier. Oh, he goes for the Stalker kill. I really wish he would have killed the pylon, though. Oh, oh, and the Void Ray dies, too. Yeah. Uh, Oracle on the other side of the map for Showtime. Getting into the natural base of Neeb right now. Nothing here to defend, so probes have to get pulled. Both players pulling the probes because both players are dying to Oracles. Yeah. But Shadow doesn't really pull his probe that far. But, oh, he stops focus firing on them. Uh, still a bigger... Uh, grab for the Oracle of Neeb gets eight to just the three of Showtimes, and Showtimes also died. It is uh, Phoenix versus Phoenix. Second target on the way for Neeb, but he is later to it, but Showtime can't afford it quite yet, so maybe they'll just even out here. Nope, they won't. Never mind. It's going to be in Showtime's lead. <laughs> That's a little worrying. Neeb has the slightest of economic leads after that, but I'm not sure that makes up for what's going to be three Phoenix difference. 
close to three Phoenix difference. I want that Mothership Corp. Bailey doesn't get it. Oh, a little bit of deja vu. Very quick fleet beacon from Neeb, who might have anticipated losing out in the Phoenix War. And if he can just either squeeze in a third Stargate or a fleet beacon with any impulse crystals, both would give him leads back. Looks like a probe was taken out, the one that was trying to get to a third base. There's one thing can, Phoenix can't do is stop a base from building. And there it is. Uh. Okay, so there's some really dumb parts about any impulse crystal though. Like, because both these units move and shoot, even if you're missing that upgrade, you don't have that range. You can still start in the middle of the fight like this, stay in the middle of the fight, follow your opponent around, and Neeb ends up like doing pretty well for himself here. Yeah, not too shabby. He's gonna have like a minute ahead, maybe even a little bit more. Probe on an adventure. <laughs> Wonder what it's it thinks it's gonna do. Uh, third Nexus comes down at almost the exact same time. Both players. Uh, I guess the question is, will Neeb try and be aggressive with what he is hoping is fast rate any impulse crystals? Uh, as you're saying, we have to be careful about how in range he gets with it. Like one mistake and he gets in range of his opponent's phoenixes, and the numbers will still win out for showtime. Third Stargate aren't on the way. Neeb shouldn't be too far behind, but he's investing into a little, a little bit more of the the gateway production. Uh, Pylon is found out. It's seven Phoenix to nine, but Pulse Crystals are done. If Neeb's gonna take advantage of it, it's got to be soon. He's got to make sure not to get in range. There we go. Ah, oh, but he's in range. So, rip. <laughs> yeah, it didn't end up mattering that much. Uh, so Stalker's on the ground help out, though. Making it not too bad, I guess. And a second pylon is even... Nope, that's Showtime's pylon. Just kidding. Uh, well, then. Don't want to call it too soon, but the fact that Neve just lost his Phoenix count and now Showtime is officially caught up in Annie and Pulse Crystals and is a Stargate ahead, I would say this is a grim situation for Neve. He's going to get overpowered by the amount of Phoenix that Showtime has. Thank you to Satet 68 for the 15 month resub, mean Dr. Zombie Grub turned into a palm tree. What? What? Is this some sort of meme that I'm missing out on? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, Phoenix versus Phoenix scraps really badly, and the thing I'm concerned about is Neep is just really behind in that supply count. He's trying to help make up for it with production, and another Stargate like finishes up here soon, but. Uh, he's kind of really... getting snowballed by the Phoenix. Now, there's some focus fire. I love this. He's mm. actually picking up the small ones, but it's not enough. And Showtime's going to take us to a game number five. I love this. These two are so good and so mashed for one another. PvP can be so weird, too. But I love that we're not seeing the, the same build every single time. And even through two different best of fives in, in less than a week's time. There's so much variety in the way they're playing. Yeah. And since it is game five, we're going to go to a uh, commercial break. See you soon. It is game number five in the second semifinals. The top left on Cactus Valley is the Red Protoss Showtime. And his bottom left going to be the Yellow Protoss Neeb. And of course, with things tied up 2-2, this is awesome. I mean, this, this series started off very one-sided, and we thought, like, damn... Showtime's getting trucked on here in this reverse kill situation, but regardless of who actually walks away with this game, I do need to remind everybody that it is the winner's bracket still. So both of these players could still win the tournament even if they lose here. However, the winner will go on to fight against Gumiho in that winner's finals. And Gumiho has had some uh, very interesting history with, uh, with Neeb, at least, of the two of them, especially with the Ting finals and all that. You oh, get a bits. lumberjack for the 200 bits. Takes a stab at the bit boss. Um, I haven't also, had anyone poke that bit boss today. Well, there's been like six health points reduced. So lumberjack, actually, I love lumberjack because we had someone else yesterday after you left who was a really big bit boss, and he's like, "Screw it, here's my attempt." And throws like 200 bits at him. Uh, well, the uh, 
Uh, we also missed Dom, I think, resubbing. I remember reading the message, and I think we read it out loud. It's a stupid message. Yeah, it is. Thank you for resubbing 24 months. Riptide, I think your mic is broken. You don't sound Russian at all. All right, Dom was there for the, the variety stream thing I was just telling you about during the break, actually. Ah. Uh. And he requested a song, Riptide, in honor of Base Trade's host. And I was like, God damn it, dude. Is that blonde? Playing it on thick. Sounds familiar as a song. I don't remember. Um, the I think we also missed maybe Kenscog for the new sub and the Burt for the 27 month resub, uh, resub. So just in case. Uh, yeah, there is a proxy pilot put down. So Showtime, he said we went for the one gate expand. I talked about this briefly in the very first game of these guys, I think. And that if you can get away with it, it does give you quite a powerful lead. And sometimes. It's not scouted fast enough, or you're not already preparing to be aggressive fast enough, that they just get away with it, and it's um, a big uphill climb. But Neve is going to try and be aggressive. He has an Oracle on the way. He has Adepts trying to get through, but there's a full wall off. The pylon was uh, canceled. And if he can't do anything with the Oracle, then his Nexus is just going to be so, so late. Oh, Adepts, Adepts, continuing to shade. Where's that oracle? There it is! Let's watch, see if it does a lot of damage. That pylon finishes, by the way, for Showtime. He just wants to delay the Nexus as long as possible. He's gonna have two times pro production, so much longer than Neeb. Although not using it right this second. There we go. A little bit concerned about the Adept pressure, I believe. But the Nexus finally goes down for Neeb. Way, way later, and the Stalkers are ready to deal with the oracle. Yeah, that Nexus timing, though, does mean he's gonna have to get something here to make that worthwhile. Mm, not too shabby. Six, eight. Uh, Adepts okay. also got in, so that's why there's, yep. there's more dying. That's some teamwork for some serious savage damage. Yeah, that was exactly what Neeb needed. So he's up now four probes, but that might not even be quite enough for how delayed his Nexus was. Stargate's going to give him a bit of scouting, and that is important, but it's like not doing the tech. Shotan hasn't started his own either. So, actually, Neeb is going to be ahead as he's getting the Robo. But um, this is where Showtime's double pro production kicks in, and he's already almost back up to Neeb's count. Twilight mm -hmm. Council first for a Red Protoss player. Militia Core final on the way for Neeb. I really don't know. Like, I'm just trying to think with these spawn locations. If this was cross, I would love for this to go sky. But the thing is, I think this actually favors Showtime if that ends up being the case. Just do the base layouts. So I don't know if Showtime's considering that or not. But right now, Neeb's certainly thinking he wants to get some damage done. That Void Ray coming out pretty quick. Depths uh, the depth gonna... Oh, they're definitely going to get some kills. I mean, they're going to get killed and cleaned up. They're definitely going to kill probes on the way out. Or a probe? Mm -hmm. Contemplated going for the sentries. That's a greedy move. I mean, sentries are definitely worth it, but Oracle comes into the natural. Denied. Mm. This attack doesn't go that great for Neeb. The first one was so much better. Yeah, that was a lot to throw at him for only five probe kills. At least the Oracle's still alive. But that was nice body blocking with Showtime. It's not enough to just target the Adepts. you got to stop them from getting on top of your probes. Second Voider does pop out for Neeb. I'm I'm not sure he wants to go into Stargate, although he's getting a third Voider, so like it's a little, a little bit up in the air. Um, but I'm recalling that Abyssal game, what started Showtime's uh, points on the board, was that he countered Neeb's Stargate play with... Well, Neeb counted his Stargate play, and then he counted Neeb's Stargate play with that faster blink and the aggressive stance with Blink Stalkers, and I, I said, actually, if Neeb had maybe known about it and gone for an extra pylon at the front, or an extra Void Ray from the Stargate, or had Mike with the Immortal a little bit better, then he would have maybe lived. So, I don't know if this is just literally anti-Blink Stalker defense. I mean, if he gets a fourth Void Ray, I'm, I'm really gonna question it. But it might just be a paranoia about Stalkers. Fourth Void Ray. I, mm, I don't know. I mean, that's really pushing off Blink and Robo. Robotics Bay. I mean... I really like Void Rays, so don't get me wrong. And when they're prismatically aligned, they can kill just about every and anything, but this is such an expensive investment. Forget the fact that it solves out tech, like you just pointed out. It just eats up so much gas. Yeah. There was a period of time where Pros vs. Uh, you know, there was definitely on ladder, as well as some of the smaller tournaments, there was a lot of Stargate play. 
But we really only got to see it once or twice. One, because PvPs, you know, they only happen every once in a while, unlike the CVZs and PvZs of Europe. And then, second of all, just, you know, they, they were still going for Disruptors or Blink Stalker attacks. You know, a lot of the Korean players were just being too aggressive to get away with a bunch of Void Rays. The point is, this is not too out there, but I think for how PvP has gone back to gateways and disruptors, it, it might be a real big surprise. So Showtime, he does get those Phoenix in there and sees an odd number of Void Rays. He's going to see a second Stargate as well, and he's going to know what he's up against. But is it already too late? He already, you know, missed his time to try and be aggressive with Stalkers on two bases. His third is already put down. He's getting into disruptors, which aren't useless, but they don't help against the Void Rays. They just help against the ground, which is still important. I'm, I'm, I don't think Showtime has enough of an army to punish this, and if you don't punish it early, <laughs> and you don't have your own Void Rays, it's going to get very snowbally. Well, I really, really want to see those Void Rays go ham here. It's so unexpected. And like I said, there's a lot of variety of play between these guys, and this this falls right under that same category. Like, who the hell goes this many Void Rays? Like, what, Arthur back in the day, maybe. Like, hmm. Uh, proxy Stargate or Proxy Gateway for the fast warpings, and a lot of gateways were thrown down. Showtime didn't really bother saturating his third base too much. Just still at 46 probes, attacking into the third. There's already a lot of Void Rays. The Immortals on the ground as well. The Disruptor could try and help. Uh, can't one-shot the Immortals. We can definitely take a lot of damage. Oracle barely lives and gets that revelation on the entire army. And I think Neeb... I, I feel like Neeb is fine. He's only down three yeah. army supply, but his army supply is really good, so... I army mean, type. But he's not even prismatic aligning, and he's killing a lot of the stalkers. Like, just, like, two seconds of attack time. Mm-hmm. Well, uh... Stasis Trap even here, in case his units get blinked upon. Very nicely done. Photon Overcharge as well. Yeah, Showtime... He can try, and he's committing to it, and he really can't not commit to this. As I said, you gotta kill it early or just, you know, be in a ton of trouble. Both Disruptors get shot out, and they do take down a lot of the Immortals' health. But still, folks, an overcharge and a lot of Void Rays. They use the Prismatic Alignment. This might be the time to go. <laughs> I love chat calling these Skill Rays. Yeah, sounds about right. I haven't heard that term since, like, Naniwa. I know. Let out your balance one, guys. They're gonna look pretty disgusting. Uh, Showtime, okay, he's gonna blink for it. I was gonna say, he's missing his opportunity, but he blinked into that stage drive I talked about, so he loses five stalkers out of the equation. Uh, Prismatic Alignment is running out of cooldown for a lot of these Void Rays, but, I mean, they don't even need it, apparently. Showtime gets pushed back. Kills, like, a Void Ray? Doesn't even get these Immortals? If he, if he doesn't win here, I, I don't know what his response could possibly be. Uh, tapping out, I think. <laughs> yeah, really, I mean... And let's not forget, this is game five in the series, so big deals to be made here. GG. GG. Yeah, this was, this was just too unexpected. Neeb, such a sick move with the Void Rays. I love it. Yeah. Um, got away with it for a little bit too long. Unfortunately, Showtime gets sent to the loser's bracket. Neeb will go on to the winner's finals, which is not the grand finals. So he's going to be facing Gumiho. We talked about this being a rematch earlier. I don't think he plays next, though. I think what we do is, if I understood what was said earlier, I think we go to the loser's bracket, and then we come back to the winners? Probably, because the loser's bracket was delayed for the semifinals for a time, and, you know, we gotta we gotta get that done eventually. I think TLO defeated Bly, if I read his tweet correctly, but it's not updated on Liquipedia. That's cool. I actually, I feel like TLO always gets far in these tournaments and then just loses, so... Like, Bly might not be the most noteworthy opponent to beat, but it's really cool they did beat him. Yeah. If that's the case. Yeah, Tilo said that he his loss to Nii made him so angry that he was able to defend Bly's early pools, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> that works. Um, and it, I like that. I like that. I think it's going to be that's what's coming up next, but we'll get the confirmation. And until then, we're going to be on break. Thanks for watching.